Bakersfield Speedway, I said, are you ready? Every October, the best of the best gather in the Golden State to settle the score. From Bakersfield, California, you're listening to Moxie Bean Promotions at the Budweiser Nationals. Hey, race fans, welcome to another broadcast. Today we are live from the Bakersfield Karting Experience here in Bakersfield, California. The bunch was just got off the carts. We had our own little oh little race God. there between a bunch of uh, announcers that don't get a chance to get on the track all the time. We <laughs> had an awesome time. Uh, we were out there sliding around. We had uh, the whole Moxie crew, and we had Sully with us, the, the lead announcer down there at Bakersfield Speedway. <laughs> he jumped on board with us and had a great time. And Today, I want to invite all you people out there listening. It is a, a great time. If you have not been to the Bakersfield Carding Experience here in Bakersfield, you have to get down here today. It's for a great cause. It's the Bailey Schweitzer uh, Fundraiser. All proceeds raised here for the next couple hours going towards uh, expenses with the Ronald, Ronald McDonald uh, deal. And uh, a couple other de- uh, expenses for the Schweitzer family. But um, today it's all about her and, and honoring her memories. We're doing all weekend an awesome time down here. I know, Soli, you uh, you just just uh, got off the carts with us. It was your first time down here. Yeah, you know, I've talked about this place a lot on the track, but I've never come down. Uh, I think mainly because I don't want the race car drivers here, and I'm on the track. But i got to <laughs> tell you what. Get a little apprehensive getting on there, but after about five or six laps, kind of finding where I was, kind of getting, and then really got into it at that point. Yeah. You know, yeah. really got into yeah. it. And I can only see, bring 10, 15 guys down here, guys and ladies, and have one heck of a party anytime. It's just great. We get food, they have games, and so much more. And again, all for that great cause uh, to help uh, the funeral expenses go fund me for Bailey Schweitzer right. and uh, her charity racing for Ronald McDonald. Absolutely, man. It's going to be an absolute blast. I hope everybody gets a chance to come out here and raise some money for a great cause and have a great time. That's I mean, the biggest thing. How much fun have you ever had raising money like this? I mean, this is yeah. the coolest fundraiser I've ever seen. This beats any dinner with rubber chicken any time. No, i got to no tell doubt. you. No <laughs> kidding. We've already got uh, one of the Schweitzer family members down here hanging out. Uh, uh, was uh, Dakota. Dakota was down here, and he's got a, brought his helmet. He came to race, and yeah. he's having a good time. Um, there, there's fans that are out here that come for the whole weekend they brought their own helmets and everything they're like we want to race yeah. with the racers we and just that's had the a, best chance you get right now yeah we just had a conversation with keith little the owner of tulare speedway he was like oh hey i follow you guys on facebook <laughs> I'm like great he goes Are you come in a trophy cup i said i don't know let's make a deal <laughs> right <laughs> you know? yeah well, super awesome guy dom you just got off the carts um, i'm still pumped up <laughs> <laughs> i'm ready to go back out right we now. are too we're gonna yeah. get out there before we uh, g- get back out of the track today but man what an awesome weekend we opened the night last night at Bakersfield Speedway for the 32nd annual Budweiser Nationals and we saw I mean, we truly saw some great racing on a track that I thought <clears throat> was probably the best I've ever seen it on night number one in the five years I've been coming down to this show. Well we talked about how smooth the track has been all year long and last night was the perfect example. Went dry slick of course with so many cars but uh, as we got later on and of course it was the late model race. Oh, man, yeah. did we see some drama in that Laney one? Laney spinning and had the lead spins, goes to the till in the field, marches his way back, and Bobby Hoke still hanging on to it. What a race for 30 laps. It was incredible. And, of course, with the uh, the Modifieds and the American Stocks and uh, yes. Mod Lights for the first time ever in the National. But I go back to that late model race. I loved it. I think the two races last night that stood out for me, uh, like you said, the late model race, simply because Cody Laney had that thing in the bag. It was wrapped up right the check. He was bad to the bone fast, had a huge lead into turn one, caught lap traffic, and the car went around, and he came to a stop. What's that do? It puts a caution mark against him. He has to go to the tail end. He drove his way back to, I want to say, a fifth or sixth place finish. Yeah, it was fine. I mean, fifth he or sixth. W- now, keep in mind, guys, that he had just jumped out of his modified yes. after winning, winning the modified Literally, the, his, uh, mod, uh, late model came out. I think his mom brought it out there. He strapped in. Yes. So he is pumped up after winning the modified main yes. event. And then he goes out there and he's leading this thing. And w- all we saw, I just saw two in a row right there. We did. We thought he was going to pull a Bobby Hogan sweep yeah. the night like yeah. he did a couple, weir- a couple years ago. The thing you got to see with, K- with Cody, if you guys were there, when he spun, he was nose into the berm. He could have hammered it and kept going, but you don't know what type of damage you're going to do to the car. Best just to stop. Let the caution come out because 
well, you don't it, want to damage the car and make your way back through. And that's what he did. That was a veteran move because he was right next to a big white tire and a big old berm, and those cars do not like to go over anything. And not to mention the two lap cars that he had to brake for, which uh, ultimately recreated that spin. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, that race right there was one that I really thought was entertaining as, as an announcer and as a fan watching it. The other one that stood out for me was, I want to say it was the American Stocks, Nick Johnson. Yes. And uh, is it Satlala? Yeah, yeah Jimmy Satlala with the Crystal Springs car from uh, Santa Maria Speedway. That's an enduro car. Did you watch that, that used race? To use for, he used to use that for destruction derbies. They took it, cut almost 1,300 pounds out of it just so it would be somewhere around 4,000 pounds. And that thing is a boat. <laughs> yeah. Big old Chevelle. Yeah. Big old uh, 70s style. I mean, well, no, like a... I don't know, it's a big Chevelle. It's like old, a, but yeah. set, like it's like a but '66 or something. It's he just a went boat and a half. bumper to bumper with Nick Johnson for I want to say 18, 20 laps. I mean, those guys were nose to tail all the way around. And Nick Johnson, I mean, that kid can drive. You know, he rises <clears> to the occasion when it comes to big events. He won in Santa Maria, the National, earlier this year. Last year, he won th- this main event in the Bud Nationals. And uh, what is he, like 16 years old? Yeah, he, Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's what they call a uh, prize fighter when it comes to racing because that's exactly what it is. When a prize fight's out there, he steps up and, you know, takes a punch and delivers. Plus, he never faltered with Lawa behind him. He, I don't think he ever looked behind him. He knew he was there. He was hitting his mark. Well, he felt the bumps. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and Set Lawa put a couple on him and let him know, hey, I'm faster than you coming through three and four. And Nick said, that's all right. You can be faster than me. You still got to get around me. Exactly, man. What? Catching him's one thing. And speaking of getting around, that 47 on the high oh, side. Brock Crawford. Brock Crawford. Was that? gracious. Was he wheeling that car or what? It looked like he had a late model with an American stock body on it <laughs> yeah. on the high side because yeah. he just dropped that right rear and go mm-hmm. around everything. Everybody, and it's amazing how you can get an American stock, which are usually 17, 18, 19 feet long, sideways, and that guy still got around him on well, the Well, that's one of the things. It, uh, talking about that, Dom was watching the races up there with us in the Mike Mosier Tower, and he goes, I can't believe how many four-door race cars yeah. are out here, and those things work. Yeah, yep. four-door G-body yeah. electric cars, but they were all, I counted 10. Yeah. Yeah. In the one feature. In the one feature. Yeah. Well, that's just all the Johnson family. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> now, now, consider, guys, if that main event went five more laps, would the results have been the same? No, nope. I don't, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so. Crawford would have, I, I think Crawford would have had him on the high side. Cause you Nick, think he would have got around Johnson? Nick couldn't go up any I, higher. He had to hug yeah. that bottom. He I tried to go so. higher, and Jimmy was able to catch him. I think that 47, because none of them knew that he was there. I don't know if he would have got by John. Johnson was just so good in the late stages of that race. Actually put a little real estate between him and the you know, the couple cars behind him. But what a race that was. The track, you know, Sully mentioned that he just stepped out of the party room here at the Bakersfield Karting Experience. Uh, the track, uh, Mike, have you noticed anything different what they're doing up here at Bakersfield as far as track prep goes? Because last night that track was uh, probably the best I've ever seen. The surface, I'm talking about the yeah. surface here at Bakersfield Speedway. As soon as the races were over, the races were over, Victory Lane got cleared out. What they do, Joel, they brought out the tractor, they, put out the sheep's foot, and went to work. And, you know, that's one thing we're not used to seeing up north is the sheep's foot being used. They had it towed behind the grader, and all they were doing was poking holes in that surface, tearing it up a little bit, opening it up so they could drive the water truck out and douse the yeah. living. Well, and we, uh, that it. was something that we really paid attention to yesterday. We really paid attention to was the track prep, and we'll get Sully back here in a minute because I want to see if he's noticed anything different when he's at the track, what they're doing. But I here's one thing about Bakersfield, a lot like Eldora, the water truck does not touch the racing surface. They no drive way. it around the inside. They got the big pump that sprays it off the side, and it covers that entire racetrack. We the- watched from the time we got to the track yesterday, guys. We watched a steady regular watering schedule with that. I think it was once an hour, once every 45 minutes or so that they were putting water on that track, keeping it nice and moist. And the way it worked out when they packed it last night, I think it was a primo racing surface, one of the best I've ever seen here at Bakersfield, if not the best. That was the thing, though. It threw everybody, the out-of-towners, every one of them got thrown for a curveball because traditionally Bakersfield night number one Mm -hmm. hooked up, big groove, lots of traction, not so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that didn't happen last night. We right. did not see a, a, a hooked-up racetrack by any means. But that surface and what what happened last night in the features, we it created such an awesome, uh, an awesome 
racing we service. We four I mean, wide in almost every class. We did, and the racing itself, it wasn't hammered down yet. I mean, there was a, there was a cushion up top. Yeah. There was guys using it. They'd drive into one, hook that cushion, and launch themselves off a of turn two. It was awesome to watch, but overall, that surface created just some fantastic racing for the fans. That cushion was a lot like a wave. Sometimes you get up there, no wave. Right. Next time you get up there, it's a nice big one, and you can ride it out of the and, turn. And that's the thing about the cushion that we saw last night, especially in turns one and two. It wasn't a distinct curb. It was not like a, tr- a traditional cushion where you have a sprint car tire or a D55 right up there building a nice, solid cushion. It was very gradual, and you had to hit it just right. Otherwise, you were <clears> going to go over it, and then you were going to lose a couple positions. We saw that during the late models. We saw that during the modifieds. It happened. But if you could master that cushion, like we saw in some of the features with the talent, like Steve Laney, Drake. Laney and Drake, <laughs> yeah, those guys were able to put that right rear tire up on the cushion and just gas it out of two and shoot down the backstretch like a drag car. But it was crazy watching the guys that were really fast because even Hogue, who didn't really get up on the cushion a whole bunch, he did use it a little bit, was just as good on the bottom half of the racetrack as those guys were up top. I mean... I know we're talking about Bobby Hogue. And yeah. That's the exception to the rule. but um, I mean, that's like saying, hey, we come out here in the go-karts and Kevin Harvick's out here running the bottom faster than everybody else. Well, uh, yeah, we're not Kevin Harvick. <laughs> right. You know? There's, there's definitely a talent level there that uh, I think a lot of people envy. Yeah. And a setup en- envy for a lot of people. If you take a look at some of the cars that were out there, Drake's late model, that right front tire – it almost looked like you could put a Coke on top of it and it would just spin around in an axis because it was that far with the camber in there that nobody else was running. Well, there, and that is true. He, yeah. Dom, that's I, something we talked about. You and I tend I to talk was, a lot about the technical side. Dom thought it was broken. Uh, well, <laughs> Dom was looking at it going, wow, we see some guys in the Pacific Northwest that run a lot of camber in the right front. But nothing like that. Nothing. nothing. I mean, Steve Drake's on his whole, a whole new level, and he got that right front cambered out the way he was. And did you see how good he was? Absolutely. I think you're going to see a lot of guys yep. here on night number two. Yep. You'll see a lot of guys start doing that. We'll, we'll see because we know <clears throat> from the first race that he had till the main event, that went away a little bit. He I, straightened it out. No, he, he did because we saw him do it, and he told, he told people to adjust it a little bit when we were out there putting GoPro cameras on his son Logan's car. And they did a little bit of adjustment to it, but not much. It, he was so fast last night. I mean, now, pick, okay, think about this. You're Bobby Hogue. You're running second in the feature where he was. And you're watching Cody Laney pull away, pull away, pull away, thinking, man, I've got nothing for this kid. Then all of a sudden he spins. Merry Christmas. Yeah, it, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank yes. you. I mean, what goes the, I mean, can you imagine that he just thought, <laughs> That's what, what a gift. That's what he said in the victory lane. He goes, um... The, Joel asked him, "What? How did you do to win this race?" And he goes, "Cody spun, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I inherited it." You know, and, and last, it. last and night you got to defend serve, well, and, and it's simple as that. Is when you're out there running, you got to defend your serve. Cody didn't get a chance, didn't do it that time. When Bobby took over serve, and he saved I'm, it right. And if I'm not mistaken, Drake was sitting directly behind Hogue at that time, right? Yes. Yeah. Now think about that. Drake goes from thinking. Uh, third place, you know, I'm not going to get by these two guys because it kind of looked like that. So they'd kind of settled out the top three, even at the halfway point. And the top four with with uh, Clay Daly as well. Right. And then all of a sudden, Laney spins. Now, Drake all of a sudden has to feel like Bobby Hogue thinking, oh, I'm not going to catch the lead. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the emotions? And, and, well, yeah, it's they the Bud Nationals. They were all looking at it going, okay, we're going to battle for second. Let's, you know, I need to make up, at least get to the guy in front of me so we can battle for second and, and third and so on. Then when Cody spins and everybody goes by him and goes, wait, that's Cody backward. Yeah. Oh, we we're going to have a caution now and everybody's going to get back together. Yeah. We need to make something out of this. Um, Sully, you've been at the, the you're the you're there every week, every Saturday night. You see what's going on with the racetrack. Have you seen anything different with the track prep this week or all year that done no. different from the past? No, it's always the same. When I walk in in the afternoon, the track looks the same, and they got that water time out there again. The truck's not on the track, and and it depends on. The, the temperature in the summer, or, or if it's going to be a cool night. But, again, there's always a lot of water. It's the same thing over and over. And Randy Schweitzer and Sean Schweitzer, they do an awesome job uh, throughout the week. Uh, Sean's in the watering truck. And uh, knowing that we would not have a break in this show, okay, it was, we weren't going to touch the track. And I think going dry slick was good. I think it equalized for a lot of drivers that may not have a bit the, all the horsepower as the Bobby Hogues, you know, and Drakes of the world. But uh, this is the way it is. We've been so blessed this year 
with smooth tracks. Uh, oh, last night's surface was I, I don't.